Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles, coming to you from an altitude of 5,280 feet. And before we start this week's episode, I'm going to encourage you to, number one, subscribe to the Mile High Podcast. If you are listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher or YouTube or wherever you may be downloading it. Make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Mile High Podcast. And then number two, mark your calendar as going for Mile High 2020, August 20th to 23rd, 2020. There's a lot of 20s in that. So you want to be there. It'll be a Roaring 20s event. And I am psyched to have this week's uh, guest on the Mile High Podcast. Um, we have known each other for a long time, a good friend, and she is um, a Life Chiropractic College West graduate. She has been a Mile High attendee and fan for years, and now this past year, Mile High speaker, she won the Doctor Speaker entry and just wowed people there. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Laura Hill. Thank you for having me, Daniel Knowles. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> We're excited to have you here. Now, first off, let's just uh, get right into the first question, which is you have been to Mile High, I don't know how many times, but a bunch of times. What has that been as an experience for you in terms of your growth as a chiropractic student and now chiropractor? Yeah, so um, like you just said, I started going to Mile High as a student. Uh, when I was in chiropractic school, I um, made it my top priority to, of course, not only um, you know learn a chiropractic technique and everything else that's involved with that, but really, really uh, focus on um, not only the philosophy, which is also huge, especially in chiropractic schools these days to keep on bringing our attention back to those things, but also the um, just keeping the spirit alive, right? And really keeping your mindset in the right place. Um, so Mile High was amazing for that. Absolutely amazing. Um, building connections, um, keeping the, uh, you know, the philosophy alive, the mindset, the, I, I often say um, being passionate about being passionate. I think it's kind of one of the secrets, um, <laughs> secrets to life is not just about being passionate, but being passionate about being passionate. Um, so I think mile high is one of the most essential things that you can do for that. Um, you know, obviously as a student and, um, you know, now as a doctor, I'm just bringing all that back to my office and all year I'm reaping um, all of the things that I have, um, you know, gathered up at Mile High um, at that program. So, awesome, awesome. Now, uh, let's start out with the chiropractic journey. What was your experience that led you to the world of chiropractic and going to Life Chiropractic College West? Yeah, I love this story actually. So, before um, I ever knew anything about chiropractic, I was a yoga teacher. Um, and uh, I was teaching yoga full time. I was really immersed in yogic philosophy, um, you know, even even more than the physical practice of it. Of course, I loved and did that and taught that, um, but also very, very immersed in the philosophy. Um, and so it was actually when I moved from Minnesota, where, which is where I was at the time, um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and moved to um, the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I actually got in care with an extraordinary network practitioner there. Um, and you know, my life transformed in ways that it never had before, which for me at that, at that point was kind of a big deal because I'd basically made transformation a lifestyle <laughs> at that point. So to have the level of transformation I had was, was a pretty big deal. But still, even though I was, you know, researching grad programs, I was considering, you know, doing a doctor of naturopathic medicine or, you know, something along those lines, I still was like, nah, I don't think I want to be a chiropractor though. This is kind of this funny offshoot of chiropractic, but um, I don't think I actually want to be a chiropractor. But then I started looking into um, Donald Epstein speaking and, um, you know, where he was, it just so happened he was going to be there. Long story short, I ended up at um, Life West, um, that's what 
he was speaking at their uh, at their thing, and uh, and I ended up at their visitors weekend at their uh, champions weekend that they have, and it was at that weekend I heard about chiropractic philosophy, and it was actually a student panel. Um, who spontaneously, all in, in sync and unison, broke out into the major premise. And it was the moment that I heard that happen and heard that major premise that I said, this is what I've been looking for. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, I, and I've got to say that over and over again, because being involved with Sherman, um, and, and I've said this over and over again, when people have gone to often events at colleges, uh, like you just described, it becomes a turning point. I know it was for me. I got on campus at Sherman at a Lyceum event, and it was just, this is where I'm meant to be. Um, so I have to say, if you're um, listening to this or watching it, and you have someone in mind that you think is on, you know, really primed for a path uh, of service to, to be a, through chiropractic, you know, get them to one of those uh, events that, you, the colleges have and get them to the ones that actually teach chiropractic in school um, uh, would be would be my recommendation so now let's fast forward a little bit so you know there are people that just go to chiropractic school right and then get a degree and then there's people that are all in and are engaged and that's like anything in life there's people that engage at a different level in the things that they're doing and um, my experience of you is that's you you were um, the leader in multiple clubs, uh, yoga at Life West, uh, network at Life West, I'm sure other things. Um, talk a little bit about the experience of being passive versus being all in while you're in school. You know, I was really lucky when I was first coming into the program. Um, there's sort of a legend at Life West. His name is Jim Hawkins. He um, was there. I think he actually just retired. Um, but he was there for over 30 years and he taught every single person who came into that school as long as they weren't a transfer student. Um, he taught some of the earlier classes. He was the one who actually did my phone inter interview before um, I started the program. And one of the things he said in that interview really stuck with me because it was a principle that I already held for myself. Um, but I really took it into the program which me, what, with me, which was this. When things get really hard, look to help other people. The more that people in this program are looking to help other people, the more success that they're going to have in the program. There's an amazing spirit at the school anyway that really uh, embodies that, but I really took it to um, the highest level that I could. Um, so I knew going into it, um, you know, I was starting the program, you know, later than, you know, some people did right out of, you know, undergraduate school or whatever the case may be. So I think I already had a sort of fire and passion. Um, to move through it, um, but also holding that principle and just knowing that I wanted to be the absolute best um, practitioner, business person, um, and chiropractor that I could be. Um, and so, you know, that was a big part of why I focused on not just, um, you know, learning the things that I need to, needed to learn within school to um, be a skilled adjuster, um, to be a, um, you know, a good business person, to be all of those things, but also outside of school um, at, you know, at programs, at, you know, many, many adjusting seminars of all kinds, um, and also running the clubs. And, you know, even things like tutoring. I, I did tutoring just to give back, just to make it easier for people to get through the program, the basic sciences, the things that they needed to do to get on the other, other side so that they could get out there and change lives. Um, and I knew that I needed to start now. Waiting to get out of school was already too late. So I needed to start, start now doing everything that I could do to be the biggest success that I could. Excellent, excellent. And you know that service point, uh, that does not apply only to, practice, to, to school, it applies to practice. I remember multiple times uh, Dr. Donnie Epstein saying that if you are having in trouble in practice, uh, if you're having lack, if you're not having enough new patients, you're not having enough finance, financial abundance, that your uh, key is to serve your way out of it and focus on service and giving 
as compared to focus on what you are receiving. So it's true of life, so anything, true. you know, whenever you think life is hard, think about who else you can help. Right. Anytime you're thinking you're not getting enough or not receiving enough, you've got to figure out how can I give on another level. And it always, uh, maybe not the way you anticipate, but it always comes back in some way. So now being to a mile high a number of times, what's a, other than you speaking, what is a favorite mile high moment over the years? Oh, what a great question. Um, you know, there are so, so many on stage, um, you know, people on stage that I could um, talk about. Um, so trying to pick one out would be absolutely impossible. Um, so I would just say, you know, after the program, spending time with just the amazing people who are a part of that program. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there's always a really great party on Saturday. Um, and there's people who have come together all over the world to celebrate this chiropractic principle, um, chiropractic principles and philosophy. And um, I think they're, you know, literally some of the best humans on the planet. And to be able to be all in one place with them is, um, is, is extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that over and over again, that one of people's favorite things is the community, the energy and the people. They just love getting to see each other. Um, and and I, can't, I can't agree more. As much as people love the speakers uh, and they bring great content and we're very uh, cautious about how we, uh, you know, put that all together and very intentional, um, above all, then the, anything that happens on stage, I think people love the experience in the community. Every, every year after the program, I notice that I have this moment where I'm like, God, my life is good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have such a, a good thing. life. <laughs> that's a great, great thing. Now, um, talking about the speaker entry contest. So that was something we added a few years ago. And, you know, I had a lot of, uh, deliberation over that because I thought, are people going to think I don't have people to speak or something like that? And I just really thought it was a good thing to have, I, I find often the people that are not necessarily the seasoned pres presenters bring something so unique when I've attended other things. And I said, this would be great to have the opportunity to have someone speak who doesn't generally speak in front of a large audience, both a student and a doctor, and it would uh, be unique. And every year that has not disappointed. It's, it's actually added so much to the program. Now, when I looked at your application and the team looked at your application, uh, you know, one, we saw all the things you, you do, but also that area of, you know, helping to individuals and community grow. And, and um, that spoke through your application. And then also watching a video of you speaking at Life West. Um, was huge for the people that were on the selection team. And um, let me just say this. What was your thought process with, like, deciding to apply or enter? Um, well, I, I, knew, I knew that I was, that was good, what was going to happen. I, um, you know, it's funny. I, I literally, sometimes when I'm just having thoughts in my head or I'm having, this is, wow, this is a really um, impactful concept that I'm thinking about right now. I'm actually thinking about it as though I'm speaking from mile high stage. <laughs> it's, um, you know, to that level. Um, I feel like it's, you know, it's part of my home is uh, part of my, you know, what I love. I really, really love speaking. I love making an impact. It's one of the things I love to do. And, and certainly, you know, mile high is for that, uh, that um, home for me, as far as, um, you know, all the ways that we've already talked about. Um, I, before I ever even applied, I started writing that talk at the mile high the year before. Wow. So um, I think it was just a matter. And in fact, the mile high the year before, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. And I said, when are you going to speak on the mile high stage? <laughs> and we had that conversation. Well, when are you? When are you? And we said, you know, I was like, well, you know maybe next year. <laughs> cool. So, mm -hmm. cool. And I, I've got to say, I heard so much rave reviews about your presentation um, from many people, uh, because there's times when people do things, 
and they do it just to do it. And then there's times when they do things to do it at their best or to win. So for example, at Tony Robbins, uh, Unleash the Power Within. He does a little exercise with the group that's very fun. I mean, if anybody's been to UPW, they'll remember this, where they actually have the audience of the thousands of people play a game of Simon Says, right? And they, it's kind of funny that like you're grown adults playing Simon Says, right? And then it goes down to the final two people to actually win. And then, uh, you know, one person wins a game of Simon Says after X amount of time and they build it up. But the lesson that he gives at the end of it is powerful was that this person, these couple people that were the last five or 10 or whatever it was, um, actually didn't just play a game of Simon Says, they began with the intent to win. Um, and you could tell that they were not just, oh, this is kind of goofy, we're playing Simon Says, they were bringing the energy of winning and being the best. And it was, you know, a metaphor to do that in anything you do in life, even something that might be as silly as Simon Says, do you play it to win or are you just going through the motions? And when you walked, you know, down the aisle and went on stage, people in the room knew that you were playing to win. And it's really about making an impact. You know, I had a really great opportunity on that stage to make a huge impact on people's lives, on chiropractors and staff's lives. And not only that, but to all of the lives of all of the people that they would touch, not only their practice members and um, patients, but, and that's huge, um, but their family members, the people in their community, the people in our world. Um, and it's through those, you know, taking, you know, not only just giving a good talk, because anyone can give a good talk, right, but taking it to maybe just a one level above or a couple of levels above what you would expect, or what, you know, maybe I already know, to just bring in that extra nuance. Um, so really having a, an impact, delivering it in a way that's impactful and engaging, especially being right after lunch, right, taking that into consideration. Um, but, you know, really doing so with that mindset of, um, you know, this is a room full of people that I can make a massive impact in their life um, by delivering um, 10, 15 minutes of powerful words uh, to their hearts and souls. Yes, yes. Now, in your talk and in your application for your speech, you gave, you, you talked about something about that when you step into leadership, a worthy adversary of some kind will appear. Uh, can you share about why that inspired you? Yeah, and it, I was, you know, I actually, when I was writing that talk, you know, that whole year leading up to when I actually uh, gave it, I had um, a different talk written. I brought in part of that into my talk. Um, but then um, Brene Brown came up with an amazing Netflix exclusive. If you haven't watched it, you should go ahead and do that. Um, and I said, she just gave my talk. <laughs> and she did a way better job and had an hour plus to do it. Um, and so I actually um, changed the talk slightly based on that. Um, now, this is a really powerful concept, um, the worthy adversary concept. Um, and um, part of what I did bring into the talk um, related to that, that, you know, I think is um, because... Uh, well, okay, so part of, part of that is, I'm thinking about 10 things at the same time, I'm really excited about it. Um, so the worthy adversary. There's something that we talk about that, you know, one of the things I said in my talk is that this, these sort of next level concepts, the paradox effect, that when you um, are at a new level of, of development, of progress, spiritual, mental, emotional um, progress, there's a new lesson that comes in this different from the previous lesson, right? right. Um, and with that being the case, what I have seen and witnessed is oftentimes there's a really important lesson, which is this, forget about what people say, dismiss the critics, keep on moving in the direction of your goals and dreams, and the critics don't matter. And that is such an important message when you're moving from that place of dependence on the opinions of others to 
uh, independence so that you can move forward independent of those opinions and um, thoughts and criticisms of others. And, and there comes a new step, a new level in that development where actually then you learn it's not all about you. It's not all about just getting beyond the critics to do your thing. But in the next level of growth, the only way that you can grow up beyond that point is then actually to take those in, to receive them, not to be controlled by them. Because now by this point, you have created that sense of independence that you know you don't rely on the approval of others. Um, you have a solid enough sense of yourself to move in the direction that you know that based on your values, you need to move. And also bringing in those opinions of others without being affected um, or driven by them is um, an equally valid um, piece. And very valuable in all areas relative to um, chiropractic and chiropractic practice as well as school. So uh, areas of Lara's wisdom. Here we're going to ask to share Lara's wisdom, which is number one, if you are considering uh, maybe wanting to enter the speaker contest for Mile High, what would you recommend? Great question. Go to Mile High, <laughs> first of all. Um, I would say go deep. Go deep, dig deep. Um, what are the concepts that um, you have found time and time again to be tried and true? Um, and do it. The, the absolute day that the speaker contest came out um, that year, I had my application in. Um, you know, I didn't wait until the last minute. I didn't wait until, um, you know, until the right inspired idea came along. Um, I just went and did it, partially because I'd been preparing for it for a year, but really my entire life, as every one of us had. Um, and know that you are enough. You are enough. So, you know, just to be on stage, to, um, to go there, to bring your presence, if it's something that you are, you think you want to do, um, then do it. Because that, that calling that's coming from inside of you to say, um, I want to do that, it may be the one of someone's life out there that's um, asking to be changed from uh, information that you uniquely have, your unique genius that can um, bring that into the world for others. Excellent. Excellent. Now more Lara's wisdom. If you are a chiropractic student listening to this, what would you recommend? Get to mile high without a shadow of a doubt. Bring as many of your friends as you can. Um, there's tons of resources out there. There's um, tons of, you know, people who have um, donated tickets and even travel expenses to, um, to get there. Um, raise funds at school. Do whatever you can to get to Mile High now. Don't cool. wait. You know, I know that there's all kinds of other seminars to go to. There's so many things. I know it's a travel and a hotel stay and everything else. It is so worth it to get there. Cool. And I agree. And the third question for Laura's wisdom is that um, you've had an impactful and successful first year in practice. I think we're a year, 18 months. Uh, how many? Roughly, years? yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. About, about 18 months, yeah. 18 months. You've had, a, a, you know, and I, I've seen you reach levels that others um, have been practicing 20 years and have not reached. Okay. Um, so that being said, new grad or someone who's been practicing five, 10 years, whatever, uh, and wants to reach. Uh, higher than where they are now, what are some keys when, keys to success that you've gleaned in this first year to 18 months? Um, number one, keep on surrounding yourself with information, um, with people, uh, with videos, audios, whatever you can to support you in what you're doing. I said at the beginning of this episode, be passionate about being passionate. Right? So it's not just about taking in the information, it's realizing that the more that you do that, the more that's going to build you um, just almost passively just by watching and surrounding yourself with that. Um, number two, seek out mentors. I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, you know, I think as chiropractors, um, unless you have an MBA, <laughs> or even if you do, 
stop trying to reinvent the wheel. I get it. Like we're smart. We're revolutionary. Every single one of us probably if we're in chiropractic, that's the case. Um, but we waste so much of our lives thinking I want to do it my way when other people have done it amazingly um, from the beginning. The path to mastery is by doing it exactly like someone else. And it's only after you've done that over and over and over and over again for years that over time, then you dance your own dance. Then you learn your own nuance. Yes. That is the path to mastery. And so um, I think people get that kind of screwed up in their mind. Um, and they think, well, I don't want to just follow someone else. I want to do it my way. But really, you just, you're putting in so much effort that you don't have to. Stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, and so that, you know, I think just even, you know, even if someone did have an MBA, having someone outside of themselves that can bring in that different perspective um, and, you know, on a daily basis to be working and meeting with them. Um, of course, you know, Danny, I have so greatly appreciated LWP. I don't think it has to be LWP. Just find something that resonates with you and, and be involved with it. Be really, wow. really involved with it and go all the way. Be willing to spend the money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in that, that sense of um, being in abundance, um, yes, it costs money to um, enroll in a program or to hire a coach or um, to go to a program. Um, uh, you know, I, <laughs> people who are doing online CEs just to like kind of get it done so that they can meet that requirement. Stop it. <laughs> just yeah. stop it right now. There's so many amazing programs like Mile High or um, technique programs that are also following the principles that are going to keep you alive, keep you thriving, keep you right. um, in the mindset of service where it's like, it's not about me anymore. It's not about this practice being enough um, so that I can get my needs met. There is so much more of an impact that I'm having. And there's people literally dying and suffering out there um, right. by me playing small in that way. Plus, you get connection with other people. And, and I, I want to say something about what you said that I think is so true. Um, you know, myself in practice and Rochelle, we, were, we had a little bit of guidance, but really we were trying to do things our own way for quite a while. Um, and we were kind of having, you know, moderate success, um, but, you know, better than many but not to the level that we wanted to. And then when we partnered with a, with a mentor, it skyrocketed for us. But there was a place where you said something so brilliant, um, which is I just did what they were doing. And I had, I, after I mastered what they were teaching me, right, um, which was actually, uh, I did it very poorly. Like I was mimicking, right? But it was a path to mastery. It was part of the path to that just, doing what they recommend. Then once I mastered, then I could put nuances and create my own. And um, for you to have the discernment of that process, and that's with anything in life. Like, so for example, uh, a group results review, where at a point I was mimicking, but now like I, it is my own and I've owned it so well that, um, you know, I, you can make everything shift in a person's story about chiropractic and relative to practice, um, because I you know, went through that step. And that's what people are doing so many things in life. It could be fitness, right? Don't just say, hey, I'm going to go to the gym and just kind of move around. Like, you know, like get with a trainer and get a program. They know what to do. And then you may improve upon it or make it fit for you. It's the same thing in so many areas of life. So um, here's they, one other yeah. really important part about that. Yeah. It's this. Make sure that person or those people or that group, whatever it is that you find, make sure that 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 reflect that person that group reflects your values yes right so important because the only way you are going to you know be willing fully to just uh sort of without question follow that path that they're laying out for you is by knowing in your heart that they're doing it from a place that's congruent with your viewpoint and with your values yep yep i i agree i agree it's so important so yes and so thank you so much for spending the time with us today on the Mile High Podcast. Um, we are grateful that you uh, were on stage at Mile High. Again, people love having you speak. And if you're watching this and have heard the episode, man, ask Dr. Laura to speak at your event. She knocked it out of the park. I know she's going to be at other stages. So, um, and 
Uh, we're grateful for also you again championing being mile high from your experience of being it, knowing how valuable it is for our students and docs and our chiropractic community as a whole. So uh, thank everybody for listening to Mile High and being part of the podcast and being part of Mile High, whether you've attended or you've just uh, been part of it virtually. I will say this, clear your calendar now, uh, mark yourself as going, www.milehighchiro.org is the Mile High website, August 20th to 23rd, 2020. Registration for 2020 is gonna be opening very shortly, um, though it is not open yet. And uh, when it does open, you want to be there at the, er at the early, easy, er um, the most savings, because I guarantee you will only rise up as we go up. It's going to be an uh, over outstanding event next, next year, as it is every year we raise the bar. So thank you for being part of the Mile High community, wherever you are. And Dr. Lara, thank you so much for being part of Mile High. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at Mile High 2020. Thank you, Danny. It's been a genuine honor.